Welcome to episode 199 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm going to share some thoughts on ending the school year virtually and what a crisis classroom closeout can look like. Visit truthforteachers.com to get the transcript or find our Truth for Teachers podcast community on Facebook. ViewSonic has been dedicated to being part of the educational community for over 30 years, and they want to help the millions of teachers and students who are finding themselves trying to learn from home. They're currently offering free access to their MyViewBoard digital whiteboarding software, giving teachers all the distance learning tools they need to continue to conduct classes. And now MyViewBoard includes new features just released and designed for distance learning. Check it out today and get access at myviewboard.com forward slash distance hyphen learning. I also want to tell you about how to provide distance learning and earn graduate level credits at the same time. Take a look at Teachers Learning Center, aka TLC. Teachers from all 50 states go to TLC for their professional development and graduate credit needs. They're accredited nationwide and they offer a wide range of unique courses, including designing an online classroom and other tech-related pedagogy. You control your schedule and there's no travel needed. Go to tlcgraduatecredits.com forward slash Angela. That's tlcgraduatecredits.com forward slash Angela to get your coupon code now. So here we are in the last episode of the podcast season, episode 199. I can't believe we're going to be starting episode 200 in the fall. And I never dreamed I'd be scrapping half of this season's topics in order to talk about crisis remote learning. And yet here we are. I really hope that the last eight or so episodes have been useful to you in these changing times. And if so, I would really appreciate you leaving a review on iTunes. I rarely ask for reviews because I think it's tedious for listeners to hear that request week after week. But please know it means a lot each time someone writes one, even a short one. I read each and every review and it is such a great encouragement to me to keep going. And of course, each review also helps other teachers discover the podcast because shows with more reviews rank higher in search. And obviously, I want as many folks as possible to know about Truth For Teachers and learn from it. Let's talk now about what's going on with you. I'm going to share some thoughts about closing out your school year virtually for those whose schools aren't reopening this spring. I'm going to share some virtual end of year activities to create closure for the year, even when you can't be face to face with your students. Let's begin by talking briefly about the classroom closeout process. This year's deconstruction of the classroom is going to look really different for most of you. A lot of teachers are being given just a few hours, sometimes even less, to go back in that classroom one final time and prepare it for the summer shutdown. I have some ideas to help with that. I want to emphasize here that it is okay for these end of year activities and cleaning out your classroom to feel like a more emotional experience than it normally would. There's always a bittersweet quality to the end of the year, and not being able to experience it face-to-face with your students and say goodbye to them is likely to magnify the sadness. So even if you've enjoyed being at home, or you were having such a rough year that not being at school felt like a relief, this is still not how you pictured things ending. This isn't the closure that any of us wanted. It's very likely that you will feel some sadness or grief or have a strong emotional reaction of some sort when you re-enter your classroom for the first time since the pandemic started. Same for when you're saying goodbye to your kids virtually. Mentally prepare for this to be tougher than normal and allow yourself some time to process those feelings. Don't allow the emotionality of the whole thing to catch you off guard so you spend the whole time pushing back unexpected tears. Show up to the task knowing it's going to be difficult. Psych yourself up so you're prepared to push through. One thing that can help is getting a game plan together before you go into your classroom for the final time this school year. When you have a checklist, you're less likely to get caught up in just feeling sad or waste time staring at the room trying to decide what to do because it feels so overwhelming. The list will make the task feel more manageable. So spend 15 minutes or so making a list of what you need and what you want to get done in your classroom in the time you have allotted. And then when you get to your room, all you have to do is execute the plan. 
I have an editable checklist that can help you think through all the tasks that need to be done. It also includes a five-step system for closing out your classroom in just a few hours. Delete the stuff that doesn't apply and add your own tasks as needed. I created this for members of the 40-Hour Teacher Workweek Club, but I'm making it available to everyone. There's a link to it in the show notes for this episode, or you can just go to truthforteachers.com to get it from the blog post. I want to spend the remainder of this episode sharing what teachers are doing to create closure and wrap up the school year virtually with their students. I have compiled some really great ideas from teachers on both Twitter and on my Facebook page. Mrs. Baskin said on Twitter, I gave my high school English students lots of choice. They could write a letter to my future students about how to succeed, or create a top 10 list of memories from the school year, or describe their reading journeys this year. They also had options for how they wanted to create the project. I wanted to start with her suggestion because I think she just has a wonderful point about student choice. Have you seen that short essay that's floating around on social media about how we are not all in the same boat right now? We're all weathering the same storm, but we're in very different boats. Some kids are in luxury yachts, and some are barely hanging on to a deflated raft. So when it comes to end-of-year activities, there's not going to be a one-size-fits-all idea. And given the trauma that we've all collectively experienced, some more than others, it's more important than ever to be mindful of how certain assignments might make kids feel. Some kids will love doing a sentimental reflection on what life has been like for them over the past few weeks, while others will find it upsetting and depressing. Some kids will enjoy an upbeat celebration, while others might find it tone deaf and not be in a mood to celebrate anything at all right now, particularly if people they care about are sick or dying. Be especially mindful of that if your students have any connections to cities or states or countries that have had high outbreaks of COVID. I can tell you that in my area, all of us personally know many folks who have gotten extremely sick, and we all know at least a handful of people who have died from this. I don't know any families here who have been completely untouched. Now, it may not be that grim where you're at, but if students have friends or family in New York or another hotspot, there may be a sadness or an anxiety that they are feeling that you're not aware of. So I just wanted to mention that here in case the vibe in your area right now is really casual and lighthearted. It is not that way for all of us. And a little extra compassion can go a long way for your students when you're thinking about how to close out the year with them. The more choice you can give them about how to process the end of the school year and close it out, the better. Here's a good suggestion from a teacher named Anita. She said at her school, they are doing school-wide optional activities. Each one will have a couple of live options and some self-directed options. There's a virtual field trip day, a read aloud day, a virtual field day, and virtual school assembly with a flip grid to leave messages. I think that's fantastic, particularly since there's a mix of online and offline stuff. Some kids love to see and interact with their friends virtually, and others hate it. So this gives them lots of different choice about how to participate and get the closure they need. A lot of folks mentioned doing Zoom and Flipgrid talent shows. I think that could be awesome, but it probably should be optional. I think many kids may not want to show their homes or show their bodies on video, or they may not want to present their talent to their peers where they could be made fun of or told they're not very good. So this is one where I think it's important to really know your kids well and make sure you're presenting the idea in a way that allows kids to participate to a level that they're comfortable with, with really clear norms about how to respond appropriately and supportively to one another's submissions. Chowder's class said on Twitter, we're creating a choice board of time capsule-like activities for students to record what they're experiencing right now and reflect on the year as a whole. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Again, if we give students choice, because it may be an upbeat celebratory thing for some of them, and for others, it may be sort of sad and triggering. So as an optional activity, that's pretty cool too. If you have photos of your students, creating a slideshow could be really great. Maybe there's some from earlier in the year when you were in the classroom together, or have kids submit some of their own for inclusion. You can set it to music and save it as a keepsake video. Alternatively, you could have kids create their own videos. A teacher named Devin said that they're going to have kids do digital memory books using Google Slides. That's going to be their only assignment for the last week of school. 
Devin's going to provide access to pictures from throughout the year, and students can add their own to their personal memory books. At their school, they're also allowing parents to drive through the bus loop from 3 to 6 p.m. to pick up end-of-year gifts, yearbooks, which the school is giving to them, and say their goodbyes. They'll have balloons set up and cars decorated for them. I love that chance to sort of wave and have that little bit of FaceTime, even if it's from six feet away. Um, at least one opportunity for that. It's pretty cool. Emily is a virtual teacher all the time, not just during a crisis. And she said, my team gives the students a survey with several reflection questions on it. We create a video with their responses, making sure that each student has at least one quote, but we don't reveal who said what. The kids really like seeing it. On Facebook, a teacher named April mentioned toasting to the end of the school year together with her students, and she linked to a fantastic post by Dave Stewart Jr. about how to do that. So I'll link to that in the show notes and the blog post for this article if you want to know how to do a toast with your kids that is age appropriate and appropriate for the situation. I think Dave has really nailed it. Jake Miller on Twitter said, I'm going to write every kid a thank you note and mail it to them. At the secondary level, this is a hefty challenge, but since they're in eighth grade and they're moving to high school, they deserve it. Sarah said, I'm finishing up with an end of year bingo to review what we've learned and keep students as motivated as we can doing distance learning at the end of the year. I'm giving gift certificates to the local businesses that support us during normal times. So gift certificates for ice cream or a mini pizza or a gift bag. I thought that was really kind. If you do have the budget to be able to support your local small businesses, that could be what your gift certificates are for. Kirsten said, I got the idea from a friend to ask family feud style questions of the students about their time in junior high. They're going to high school next year. And we play, we'll play the game via Google Meet. I'm going to ask the parents the questions for the final round and surprise the students with that. So they'll have to guess the top answers that their class's parents said. Jan shared this. I think we're going to have a Zoom party with treats and cool virtual backgrounds, maybe with a common theme, and we'll play some games. At the end, everyone can say one thing they're grateful for. And finally, Lori said, I'm going to do a Zoom meeting to give away individual awards to each student, and then maybe read them an end-of-year picture book like I Wish You More by Amy Krauss Rosenthal. I'm also sending a book to each student, along with their award and a name keychain that I made from Shrinky Dink paper. It's going to be in their bags with all their personal belongings from school. If you want to see a written list of these ideas, go to truthforteachers.com or click the link in the show notes. You'll be able to read, th- read through all of them or share the whole compilation if you want to. I'll continue to add to that post too as I hear about more ideas. So that's a wrap on season 11 of Truth For Teachers. We will resume the normal Sunday episodes again in August. And in the meantime, I will check in periodically with you here with mini episodes, announcements, and probably some bonus episodes over the summer. I'll be honest and say, I have no idea what next school year is going to look like or what I'm going to be sharing on the podcast then. I have a feeling that the plans for reopening schools will be wildly different from one school district to another. The one thing I know for sure is that I am committed to doing the hard work of finding all these emerging best practices and workarounds for you next year. I can already tell there's going to be a lot of mixed messages and a lot of impossible sounding expectations. And I will be here creating podcast episodes to help you find a sustainable way to teach. Your mental, emotional, and physical health are more important now than ever, and I am not giving up on my quest to help teachers stay in balance and show up as the best version of themselves each day. The full year 40-hour teacher workweek program is going to be adjusted for whatever challenges are coming, and that's starting this summer, so you'll have that as a support if you'd like to. None of us have all the answers, but we're smarter together. It's not going to be easy, but I promise, It's going to be worth it.